Hey guys, it's Baban and I am painting a for Perry. So, I figured I'd go through how I do paintings, because I've done this in another tutorial, or I've mentioned it, but uh, I don't know, I think it needs a video on its own. So this is the thing I've already done to start, and I'm going to show you how I'm doing it, and why I'm doing it, and how it's going to end up. And I'll put a link to the speed paint of this after it's finished, so that you can see the entire process, but this is just showing you the start of it, and the reasons for me starting it like this and you know how it, how it works and why it's a good method okay so I did start with this layer of course with the colouring but what I'm gonna do is get rid of that and start another one so I can show you completely from the start like what I'll do so I've got all my sketch layers ready to show me where everything is just so I've got a bit of an idea and not just slapping down colours willy nilly so I want a bit of um, an idea of where they're going and making sure all the layers are right and we'll make a new layer to start on so I've got here all my different colours that I've picked and I know I want blues, oranges, like yellowy colours and pink because they all work together nice so what I've done is I've gone and picked like the lightest colours and the darkest colours and I've picked the midground that I want and the midground is it's basically what I'd call the atmosphere colour and this is the colour that I've picked so it's fairly dark but it's not the darkest colour that I've got there's still a darker colour after it there's still a darker blue so what I'm doing with that is I'm just gonna make the entire background of this nice blue colour because that's the sort of atmosphere that I want and that's the main colour and that's gonna be the colour that sh the shadows are in the entire thing so fill that in when it loads and the entire background is gonna be that nice blue colour for me to work off of and it takes a little bit to fill in because uh, if you can see the size of the file at the top it's uh, huge it's nearly there come on do it do it there we go there we go now you can see it's got a bit more of a feel of where it's going now even just with the black colour and referencing those little ones in the corner so now what I'm gonna do is go and get a nice big sloppy brush and I'm gonna start blocking in the colours. Now my hair is gonna be pretty much one block colour so I'm just gonna block that in I'm not really gonna pay attention to light in that because it's gonna be quite I want it to be quite dark because it's supposed to look wet so it's gonna be dark and there's I'm gonna be light hitting it but I'll add the light on afterwards. And now what I'm doing is I'm picking the skin colour. And because all the shadows are going to be this nice atmospheric blue that I've got, I'm just painting this on lightly to retain the shadows. Like It's like um, instead of drawing the shadows in or painting the shadows in, like straight painting... Um, instead of picking the skin colour and then painting the shadows on, I'm picking the feeling of the shadows and the background first, and I'm painting the lights on over the top. And obviously this will affect, if you only um, paint it on a, a lighter opacity, this affects, because um, they mix together, so it'll affect the colour of the shadow of it. So you've basically already got your shade in there you're just adding in the base colour and then the highlights and obviously as you add more the colour becomes more saturated in that but it'll blend into the this atmosphere colour that we've put down so that even if it's a really strong colour that might look out of place as it blends in to the colour and it's not as strong it'll uh, all fit together because it's all got the same the same blue as shading and I don't really leave anywhere by the time I finished I don't leave 
any of it um, purely that blue because I all I I fill it all in and pick the colours. But uh, the shading is whatever colours on top or whatever colour the thing is mixed with that blue. But this is my way of mixing it with it by just putting it on over the top. And uh, what I'm showing you here is you probably think I'm copping out by doing it with someone with like greyish skin so I'm doing a bit of skin tone for you just to show you that skin tone will work as well because I know people have trouble with skin tone but you can see how it works and how the colour kind of shows through more as there's more light hitting it because you know as there's more light hitting it it's gonna come through more but uh, otherwise it's gonna be a bit more in shadow and obviously you've got this blue colour coming through okay now I know that I want the part of her face that's above the water to be lighter because there's going to be more light hitting it because it's not affected by the water that's dispersing the light a bit once it well once it hits the water and bounces from it so anything underneath the water isn't going to be hit as sharply by light and here I'm just blending in a bit of pink so once I've got the colour of the skin down Um, and I've, it's not completely, like, I've um, made it the right colour and the shadows are where they need to be. Um, I'm just adding in a bit of the pink, just to give a bit of a gradient and a bit more colour to it. And I'm just adding that in softly so that it mixes with the colour, the um, skin colour that I've put over the top. It's all just mixing colours, really. Uh, how I like to describe it is I'm using the painting as a palette because after this what I'm going to do is just not even use the colour wheel or the colour picker or select any of the little palette that I've put at the top. Once I've got everything down on the painting, really scruffy like, like the one I showed you at the start, after I've got that I can just pick colours straight off the canvas and keep painting. Like it's, there's no need to go and pick anything else because it's already already there. I've already mixed all the colours on there that I need. Mixing in the colours. Obviously more of it and brighter towards the light source. And these are pretty much all mid-tones and I, like I say I've got the lightest colour that's sort of a bluish white that I end up putting on for the highlights but this is just um, adding in the mid-tones and letting them mix with the shadows so I've got the mid-tones and the shadows and then the highlights will get put in afterwards making some nice gradients because you know you want to mix gradients as well of the colours you're using on the mid-ground just adding them in nice and soft and like I say, if I just put these straight down really blocky, um, how I do with my cell shaded stuff, like I'll uh, select the area and then invert it so it'll fill the figure in and then fill it in with the colours. It'd look a bit uh, confusing and then I'd have to paint that blue colour into it into the, uh, into the shadows. But, it, you know, it's a lot easier this way to do it, I've found. And it's, like I say, it's a lot easier than thinking you've got to go to the colour wheel every time for something. And picking each individual colour, like the midground, the highlights and the shadows. What you want to do is keep it all to one colour. Because once you've got it all to this one colour in the background, the shadows are already there. You're just adding in everything up from that. And because I've picked one colour for the highlight, this whitish blue, which I'll show you later... Because I've added that in, I'm just mixing it over the top with whatever mid-ground I've put down. Just like I was mixing in the bits of pink on a face. Once I had the colour of the skin, I mixed in the pink with it to make it a bit of a tint. Yeah, I think a lot of people do think, oh, if you're painting, you've got to keep going to the colour palette and picking colours and putting them down and 
I don't know, um, unless you really know what you're doing, I'm guessing there's a, a lot of room for error. And with a background, I suppose you could always do this with like gradients and different colours. You don't have to do it all one block colour because, I don't know, you could try maybe blue at the top and it go greener towards the bottom. But as long as you're mixing um, with just with the thing you're painting onto, you should be alright. What you don't want to do is mix something in one area. Say I mix the colour... Um, Especially if you've got like a gradient or different lighting going on which can make things look a bit more interesting and better and What you don't want to do is say I mix a colour In this little bit of the ear up here and then I pick a colour from there and move it down into Her left hand the left that we're looking at It's too far apart and the lighting could be completely different over there and you don't want to pick a colour from up there and move it down to the bottom or into a different place. You only want to pick colours around where the thing you're painting is. You don't want to go to another part of the painting to pick a colour. I think I did do that a bit but it was just um, to pick colours from the painting. Say I needed like a darker colour. I didn't want to go and pick too many things from the wheel because they start looking out of place and it's better to just go and pick something from a, a different part of the painting but that was when I was just doing little details like drawing in line art or like soft line art around it just to define the shapes it wasn't like um I needed a large bit of shading and I went and picked a different bit to go and paint it but yeah generally you want to not do that because the lighting could and should be completely different in a different part of the painting. Like I wouldn't pick a colour from around her nose to do her forehead. But I might do the cheeks because they're sort of close. But yeah I wouldn't p pick a colour from down there and move it upwards. You want to have all the colours where they need to be before you start really rendering it. Adding a bit more detail on the eyes or just fixing the colours a bit. And you can see I'm already starting to uh, eye drop colours that are from it and adding in um, colours that I've mixed for the shadows. So it's like you can see the shadows on the eyes, they're not completely this blue, they're like a darker yellow that's been mixed with the blue. But I've picked that mixed colour just off of the sloppy painting and then cleaned it up instead of you know mixing them separately and then moving the colour over because when you're mixing it on the painting you can see how it looks and how it's working and you can always clean it up so you don't need to worry about it <clears throat> adding in little details just little soft highlights or mid-tones And you don't want to do this really zoomed in either, you want to keep it at a distance. Maybe you have the picture at like the size of the screen or something. Because the more zoomed in you are, the more tempted you are to go and noodle at it. But yeah, you can see how that's coming together. And without the line art, it doesn't look like much. But the important thing is that the colours are there. And you're going to go and clean them up once they're all there. And you can see now I've added in in a few places uh, little highlights and you can see there's a lot more on top of a brow there's sort of a gradient going on there um, adding in a bit of the pink on her goggles I'm gonna add the pink on her headband just add it in really soft and you do want to just use a soft brush for this or um, one that will blend a bit easier and isn't as sharp just so you can get all the nice soft gradients because you can um, go and sort out anything sharper later but you know you're pretty much okay once you've got an idea of where all the soft gradients are 
Like you can see on the hand there are some sharp bits but they, they are still quite soft if you zoom in like they're really scruffy but that's the point of it just to find out where everything is and the colour of it. This is just a really easy way to uh, get colours down and have them all work together and look good like like I said on its own the colour palette doesn't look too impressive and it looks sort of gross but when it's all brought together with the same shadow and everything isn't at full opacity everything starts to come together and it looks quite nice and this is quite dark compared to the one that I did first and I'll show you that one in a minute again but uh, with that one I'd worked on it a bit more so I'd already picked the colours in this way and then gone and selected them and started to clean it up a little bit and put in where everything is but yeah that's how I'd usually go about it yeah mine's a lot more scruffy I didn't spend as much time on it but you can still see how the colours are there and how they're playing with that blue uh, yeah the water's a bit more thingy on mine um, yeah there we go that's near enough it I think uh, you can see I've put a few little highlights in as well and especially on the um, gem on her head and yeah there we go I think that I think that's it yeah that's it you can see that one a lot better though that one's got a lot more shape to it because I've spent a bit more time on it than the first one I did uh, yeah anyway thanks for watching I'll put a link to uh, the speed paint so you can see it finished uh, the process of finishing it and I put this on Wheel of Fine so you can go and vote for it to be printed on merch so go and vote for it there and I'll put a link to where I post other shit so uh, yeah thanks for watching I hope this helped bye bye